You're listening to the Platform Launchers Podcast. I'm John Stonge, and it's great to have you with us this week, as always, as we talk about building and growing and monetizing your online platform. We talk about taking your passion, turning it into a platform, and helping you earn a paycheck from it. And every now and then, if you've been listening to this podcast or if you've been watching us on YouTube, you know that from time to time, we like to bring in some pretty high caliber guest experts. And we've got one of the best with us this week. In fact, we have Honore Corder with us. You're probably familiar with her name if you've been listening to this podcast for a while because she's graced us with her presence in the past. But it's been a little bit. And so we wanted to invite her on again this week so that she could talk about this idea of turning your vision into reality, taking short-term massive action. I have a whole bunch of questions for her uh, about that. But that being said, welcome, Honoré, to the Platform Launchers podcast. John, I am honored and delighted to be with you. Thank you once again for having me back. Well, we love having you on here. And as I mentioned to you last week when, when you and I were chatting, this past summer, you were promoting one of your books, Vision to Reality, and it's a book that, that has been out for a little bit, but you have a new version of it that was uh, released just a few months ago. And I picked up a copy this summer, and I was enjoying it, and we were talking about it as a group just during our Q&A time last week. And I said, boy, we got to see if Honoré would be available to come on and just coach us a little bit on this. And so we're going to talk about that. Tell us a little bit about all the things that you're doing and specifically what inspired you to write Vision to Reality. Well, thank you, John. All the things I'm doing. Let's see. <laughs> um, well, I am ho I am the host of the John Stonge uh, Worldwide Fan Club, <laughs> headquartered in Middle Tennessee. Um, actually, well, also that. And I write books. I write and publish my own books pretty consistently. And then I have a bespoke book publishing service. I help professionals to craft a revenue generating business asset in the form of a book and help them to understand how to market it and how to market with it. And then as you know, at your mist, I run the Empire Builders Mastermind. And I think that is pretty encompassing of what I do. There's some-, some so, Those are some of the biggies. Yeah. And um, and when when you hear Honoré say that that she has written some books and sold some books and helps people uh, craft their books and put books together and, and and doing all these things, you understand that we're hearing from someone who doesn't just write books as a hobby. She's somebody that's got this figured out to a science. She's sold millions and millions of copies of her books at this point. I know it's approaching somewhere around five million, and so that's uh, that's. Pretty impressive. And so when I see somebody like Honoré, who has a history for taking action, writing a book about taking action, I think, all right, I'm going to take some action and I'm going to invite her to share that wisdom with us. And so here's my first question, Honoré, as we talk okay. about this idea of vision or reality, short term, massive action. All right. First of all, we'll just start broad. And that's this. Yeah. Can you define what short term, massive action means to you? Um, it means identifying a period of time and within that period of time, having a goal that's important, a goal or several goals that are important, and then figuring out what is absolutely the most action I can take that is intentional and purposeful during that period of time, knowing that there is a beginning, a middle, and thank goodness, an end. <laughs> <laughs> is there a specific period of time that you would look at and you'd say, all right, this amount of time, if you're going to do this, if you're going to set aside time, I recommend this stretch of time. Um, well, I have narrowed it down to 100 days. As we, you know. we, yeah. Yes, I, I do. But I want <laughs> I, and we actually and and those that are listening to the podcast or watching us on YouTube. Uh, one of the members here in our group was talking about how he listened to the audio book of Vision to Reality this past week, and he set up some hundred day goals based on your counsel there. But why do you like, why do you like 100 days? Why is that such an ideal time in your, in your mind? I feel as though when, and I'll just speak for myself and then, which is where I started with figuring out this process, I would try to do something in 30 days. I would attempt to get progress made in 30 days and 30 days was not long enough for me I wanted that type of instant gratification, but I found 
that I didn't get the teeth to catch. I didn't get into the momentum period. There wasn't enough time for the results to show up with 30 days. So 30 days was too short. And I feel a little bit like Goldilocks and the three bears when I'm telling the story, I want you to know. Um, <laughs> and so then um, I noticed that every year we would all set New Year's resolutions and I was no different. And this is from now 35 years ago when I started doing this in my late teens, early 20s. So for those of you calculating, that means I'm 40. Obviously. <laughs> um, and I would set New Year's resolutions and a year seems like a really long time. So I don't have to get started right now. If I have a whole year to do something. I don't really start to feel urgent about it until like now, October. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I was really trying to figure out how to actually get myself to get results. What was going to work for me? And it took some trial and error, but I figured out that a hundred days was not too long and that I felt like I had a long time to get started. Um, I needed to be intentional and purposeful every day, every one of the 100 days, um, that it would take me at least 30 to 45 days to get into some kind of momentum. However, then there was the ugly middle because a hundred days is still a long time and there's some fatigue that can happen. So I had to figure out the different stages of the hundred days. 30 days didn't give me the results I wanted. A year was too long. Um, a quarter incidentally, because I have an aversion to math. If anyone knows me, I always say, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm avoiding math like the plague. Um, every quarter has a different number of days. And so when I would work in any type of sales environment, they would kind of pit Q1 against Q2. And I thought, well, Q1 doesn't have the same number of days as Q2. So how do you know who really wins? Then you have to multiply and divide and that's math. And I don't like math. So I'm going to make it easy. If I want to do something 1% per day over a hundred days is a hundred percent. That's easy. I'm always going to know where I am percent to goal. Mm -hmm. Today happens to be my day 41 of 100 days. And I know where I am percent to goal for each of my goals. And it's very easy to do that math in my head. And I'll use a, a round number and then you can ask your next question. But if I set a goal of doing a hundred thousand dollars in a hundred days in income, I can easily say, well, as of today, I should have earned $41,000. And if I've earned $40,000, I'm 1% behind or $1,000. If I've made $77,000, then I'm 36% ahead of goal. It's very easy for me to do. Did you see I just did that math in my head? That's I saw that. That was impressive. <laughs> I, I mean, it's quite astounding, actually. Um, <laughs> so, so I wanted it to be very simple for me to do. I wanted to, I, I want to make everything easy to feel good and hard to feel bad, easy to feel mm -hmm. successful and hard to feel like I'm failing. And so setting up those parameters was where I came up with the hundred days of not too short, not too long, enough time to get into momentum and to see results, um, but not too long that I felt like I had forever, et cetera. That's a, that sounds like there's, I guess, an element of psychology in this, in, in doing this kind of system. It's, it seems like you're trying to just analyze how I probably for starters, how your thinking works and what keeps you motivated over a period of time, but then also how other people tend to actually succeed at getting things done. What, what do you suppose the psychology behind all this would be? Well, it, we want something fast. We want to achieve a goal fast. And so we're looking for an instant coffee, microwave popcorn, right? I want to just turn, I want to turn on, I, I think of a movie I want to see better off dead and I'm going to immediately do a search and I want to turn it on and there it is. Where can I watch it on demand? There was a time when you had to go to the movie theater and if you missed it, you couldn't watch it. If you didn't sit down in front of the television and see a show real time, you would miss it. Now we have it much more easily. And so the psychology is that things for us must be easier or it's easy to feel like we've failed. It's easy to give up on ourselves. And so the psychology um, behind it for me has been sustaining over all of these years as I have 
mastered it and then shared it with other people and they've liked it, which is really fun. It is really fun. I, when you, when I first read your book, I read it as someone who already knew you and had heard you verbalize this. But yeah. the first time I read this book was this past summer. So just a few months ago, uh, maybe just about three months ago, something like that. Yeah. Yep. And but I'd heard you reference this before. And in the time that I've known you, I've watched you get a lot of things done. I've seen book after book after book written and published and it's out there and it's getting reviews. And I look at that and I'm like, all right. And I know that you've already got new things in the pipeline. As soon as something's hitting the the stage and getting out there, I know that you've already got two or two or three other things already in the pipeline that you're working on. But sure. following this this uh, short term massive action approach obviously seems to be helping you. I'm guessing you you kind of do you use this to basically break up your whole year? You know, as you're thinking about how you're setting up your year, it's basically blocks of a hundred days where you're taking short term right. massive action. Yes, I I run a 100 day uh, cycle from the beginning of January, so I'm on vacation generally until the second week of January. So the first Monday that I'm working is my day one. And that mm -hmm. will take me through mid April. And then I take a break because you got to have a break. You got to come out Definitely. of the pressure. You, I call it being in the soup. Got to come out of being <laughs> in the soup a little bit. So I take a two week break there. And then I start the end of April. And that takes me to the beginning of August. Mm -hmm. And then I take a big break. I take almost all of August. And then I come okay. back after Labor Day. And that which is where I started this 100 days. And that will take me to the second week of December. And then I take a big break. And so there it's intense periods of basically sprinting, but not sprinting. I like to, rather than sprinting, I like to say it's an intentional, purposeful cadence. That's right. It's like when I'm in good shape, I can walk and chew gum and have a conversation at the same time. It's the same type of cadence where I don't feel like I'm out of breath but I don't feel like I'm phoning it in either, if that makes sense. Right. Totally. But so, then I take a break where I'm not, where I don't know what day it is because I, there is no day. I'm on a break. You're on a break. You're not thinking about it. You're giving nope. yourself intentional time off. You're Correct. scheduling it so it happens. If it gets on the calendar, then it happens. Right. That's right. So, all right. So there are two things that you, um, that I'll ask you about what you just brought up. One is this, and it's just a, uh, I guess a yes or no. I already I already know where you're gonna what you're gonna say with this, but I want absolutely our podcast listeners to hear this. You mm -hmm. use the example of somebody earning a hundred thousand dollars in a hundred days. Yes. So theoretically possible, or have you actually seen that happen? That was my first my of my first official STMA. That was my first goal. And yes, I've seen it happen. I've achieved it myself. And I've also achieved it on the very last day at two o'clock in the afternoon. I was 0% to goal for a hundred days. Nice. I think yeah. sometimes people hear stuff like that and they think that must be something for somebody else, or that must be theory or, or whatever it may be. And, uh, I, I look at that and I take inspiration from you and from others that I, I consider are, you know, my, my action taking friends that I see actually getting things done. When you say something like that, I know you don't mean that theoretically. I know that you mean that as an actual thing, that somebody can actually do that. You've done that. And a big part of that is is really just soldiering on, believing that it's possible for you. If it's possible for somebody else, why wouldn't it be possible for you when it comes to something like that, even though it's a big goal? Right. And if it's possible for me, it's possible for anyone listening. Yeah, absolutely. The All right. So now my second related question related to what you just said, you say you brought you block up your year or block out the year based on, um, you know, these, these basically three spurts of short-term massive action with reasonable breaks in between. So give people a picture of what over the course of this past year you were able to personally accomplish doing that sort of thing. Tell us about the books or the other achievements or anything like that that you'd like to share. Sure. So I did, uh, five books this year. Um, five of my own books and then five books for clients. So mm -hmm. 10 books. I ran EBM this year. So I ran, run a mastermind. Um, mm -hmm. I did a 100 day challenge in, in the 
in the course of my 100 days. So my middle challenge, I did 100 days with no cookies, candy, chips, cola, Coke, the kind you drink, not the kind you snort. Um, <laughs> we gave you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I mean, I just have to clarify. You, yeah, there's probably some listeners. I don't know everybody who listens to the show. There's some people that probably went there in their mind. <laughs> I mean, I could be suspicious, right? If you... <laughs> <laughs> Probably you truly not, had the maybe. benefit of the doubt. <laughs> right. But maybe it could, it could happen. So there were the six <laughs> things I wasn't allowed to have that were on the no, on the no fly list and no complaining. And there was probably complaining, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't have any of those cake was the other one. And so that was a challenge that I gave myself a suggested challenge. Um, I called 450 people that I hadn't talked to in at least four months and up to 10 years and opened oh, wow. up some, some relationships that I had just not on purpose let go of, but they didn't call me either. I'm just saying. Right. Um, I remember yeah. you posting something about that, by the way. This is an aside, but it's re relevant, I think, yeah. uh, where you posted something, I guess probably just on social media, related to how interesting it is the people that are in your life that if you didn't take the initiative to reach out to them, would they even reach out to you? And I think we all probably have people like that in our life that, yeah. that yeah. we can identify with. So that's kind of an aside, but you said that you, you took, you took the time to contact 450 different people just being in intentional to maintain in one month, maintaining those relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just so that we could do a whole conversation about one of my books was business networking, which was a mm -hmm. redo of a book. And then I re one of my books was republishing vision to reality because one of your platform launchers is Brianna mm -hmm. Henley. And she is one of my STMA certified coaches. And so yep. I re actually redid the book to help her to get more coaching clients. Love it. Love it. We had, if, if yeah. you're listening to the show right now, go back just a few months, uh, uh, just a few months earlier, I don't remember exactly yeah. which month it might've been in the summer, but we had Brianna on as a guest expert and she had a lot of valuable things to say about the coaching business that she leads and also just a, a, a great person of character as well. So definitely check that out. I have a motivation question for you though. Um, okay. in the midst of that hundred day period of time, a hundred days is a reasonable number, but I, like you had mentioned that there, you know, there's the excitement of starting and the excitement of finishing, but sometimes there's that, that muddy spot that you called being in the soup, right in the, in the middle there. So how do you maintain motivation while you're in the midst of one of those STMA bursts? So I uh, consider my practices just part of my protocol. And I have a saying that I picked up from one of the books that I have read over and over. And it basically says something like the, the worse I feel, the more committed I am to my protocol. In other words, most of the time I feel like getting up at four o'clock in the morning and meditating and doing my affirmations and my journaling and then my writing putting in my writing practice to continue to produce content, books, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of days I do not, John Stonge. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so in addition to reverse engineering my circumstances, and you can ask me about that if you'd like, um, to make it easier for me to follow through in that, I remind myself that my future self tomorrow honore will be really excited that today's honore did all these things mm -hmm. 10 years from now you know you know 35 year old honore is going to be really excited <laughs> <laughs> um that, i see what you mean about the math part yeah there, the, I mean, it's, uh, the, it's a little fuzzy I don't, you know like numbers <laughs> numbers are not my thing <laughs> but i know that a year from now i'll be really glad that i made effective choices today that I made the best choice that I could possibly make today. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow I'll be really glad that I made the best choice that I could make today, the most effective choice that I could make today. And so I don't really rely on motivation. I more rely on inspiration because inspiration comes from within. However, I do have things that I am doing consistently to keep up my motivation levels. And it is, they are, well, they are 
the things I listen to, the things I read, the things that I say when I talk to myself, my, my mantras that I'm repeating to myself, mm -hmm. circumstances, people that I'm talking to. And so I have the people that are asking me, you know, you put, you put yourself high enough on the flagpole, people are going to be asking you, well, what day is it on array? How are your goals coming? You know, <laughs> have you written anything today? And I really can't mm -hmm. say no. I can't say I haven't written anything for six months. Did you write something, John? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That really work, right? So it's a mm -hmm. little bit of, I put it out there so people ask me about it, but then I also ask myself about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I have a finite amount of time on this earth. I know I can always get more money, but I don't know how much time I have. None of us know how much time I have. we have. Mm -hmm. And I want to make the most of it while I'm here. And I want to make the most impact that I can make while I'm here. And in order to do this, I can't do it in one day, but I can do it a little bit every day. And that's my motivation is just to be, and it really just boils down to this in essence, is that I want to be the voice in someone's head telling them they can do something when their own voice is telling them they can't. I love that. And I love what you're saying there too about just taking stock of our lives. And one of the ways I, I phrase uh, what you just said in my own mind, I, I think of it as a stewardship issue. I think, all right, I have a finite number of days. I want to be a good steward of the life God's blessed me with. And and uh, to me, that's a great philosophy, a great motivator as well. But I, I bet you get this question. I get this question quite frequently too, um, related to procrastination. People always, that's one of the big struggles that everybody seems to have. We we have the desire to do things, and yet we we procrastinate sometimes. And so I wonder how, you know, just like you've outlined in, in your book, Vision to Reality, and again, if you haven't read that, be sure to check it out. Uh, she has it up on Amazon. You can, you can easily order a copy of it immediately. But I wonder how can short-term massive action, setting up what you just described, help somebody if they feel like one of their biggest struggles is just overcoming procrastination, that failure to stewardship the time or to the failure to steward the time that they have uh, correctly and, uh, and productively. Well, so uh, of course, everyone procrastinates, including me. However, <laughs> I, I kind of figure, I kind of foil myself in that I, I set things up so that I'm not procrastinating. And I also don't try to do everything all at the same time as I mentioned. And mm -hmm. so if it takes less than five minutes, I just start it. If it takes longer than five minutes, I just set a timer for five minutes. And then I do something that I enjoy while I'm doing something that I don't think I'm very good at or that I don't enjoy. Mm. Music is a nice motivator. Mm hmm a fun or a motivational podcast is a good motivator. Or I'll say, I can I can be a terrible steward of that 30 minutes if I'm a good steward of this 30 minutes. I like that. So you give your you, you give yourself the uh the added motivation in the midst of it. it's like, all right, be real productive for a period of time right here. Yeah. And then you could reward yourself with some downtime, some relaxation. Yeah. yeah, because I'm a human being, not a human doing, and I get tired. Mm -hmm. And right. norm, like it's 8.03 central time in case anyone's paying attention. And normally at this time, and everyone makes merciless fun of me for it, and mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, but normally I'm, I'm out, lights out. I'm asleep. I have a I sleep you... mask with little Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> and I got, I'm like, I got the mask on and the, and the little, you know, sometimes it's an audio book. Sometimes it's a podcast. Sometimes it's just a meditation. And I am. O U T out. Mm -hmm. You're out. I yeah. actually think without even uh, realizing it, you just subconsciously revealed one of the secrets to your success. You said people could say whatever they want about this. Okay. I don't care. I don't care. Everybody's Sorry, got if, opinions. I don't care. I'm just going to go if, and be successful. Yes. If they are not going to pay my bills or <laughs> help me hide a body, then they get no <laughs> say. <laughs> All right. Here's another aside. Uh, speaking of help you hide a body, right? That's yeah. how you know who your best friends are. That's hopefully, right. hopefully there's never a, a need for that. I remember when I got right. my first car when I was 16, my dad, I didn't have my license yet. So my dad had to pick it up. And I, I said to him, I said, dad, I didn't get a good look at, at, uh, a few things in the car. How, how big of a trunk does it have? And his comment to me was, I think you could hide probably two to three bodies back there. Perfect. And I was like, what? 
uh, okay, great analogy. And so, and little did I know it's the biggest test of friendship. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You don't know who your friends are until you have to hide a body. That's right. So I, I, as an aside, I started rucking. It's oh, in, did you? Yeah. So I got a rucking vest. It's 12 pounds, which doesn't okay. sound like a lot until you put the vest on. And so the gal next to me at the gym was like, what is that? What are you doing? And so we had this whole conversation. I said, now I know why dead bodies are so heavy because this is only 12 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm anyway. glad this became part of our theme tonight. You know, I, I can Aren't see you? an extension of vision to reality, yeah. vision to reality to um, larceny. I don't know, something yeah. like that. It could be like a, a sequel. Um, yeah. All right. I, I only have just a, a moment here, but. I think yeah. this would be a uh, one of I'm going to ask two questions to finish us up. And one is this. Okay. Uh, what do you think some of the common misconceptions about taking massive action over a short period of time might be? Any misconceptions that sometimes yes. you encounter? Yes, that you're going to accomplish everything in your first hundred days. It's actually going to take at least two or three 100 day periods for you just to get your cadence, your rhythm. And so go easy on yourself. And when it doesn't go the way that you wanted it to go, because it's almost like God has a really good sense of humor. Like the minute you write down, I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars in a hundred days. God goes, D really? Ha ha ha. <laughs> or you're going to have to do it in a way that is counter to what you think. So that is the biggest misconception is that you can achieve everything in a hundred days. 100 days is an arbitrary fake deadline they don't take away your birthday nothing bad happens on day 101 it just gives you a, an amount of time to really focus and be intentional and purposeful and then when the 100 days is over you press the reset button and that's why if you if you do read the book and thank you if you have and thank you if you do there are the review questions that you ask yourself what went right what do I need to let go of what didn't work that I thought was going to work what can I do more effectively next time Love it. And my final question is this. It's not even a question, really. I, I just I know that there are people that are listening to us right now that have dreams, goals, ideas, things that they would love to see come to pass, but they're stalled and they're they're still trying to figure this sort of stuff out. And so would you do a favor for whoever may be listening uh, or even anyone that might be live on our call right now. we got a wonderful group live on the call here with our Platform Launch Launchers uh, Members Club. Uh, give us the perfect pep talk if this is something that we're thinking about doing. If we're thinking about taking short-term massive action, finish us off this week with a pep talk. Okay. Well, you have something in your mind that you want to achieve that you may or may not have started a, a few times, several times. And for one reason or another, you have stopped doing it, you've gotten delayed, someone got sick, you had some sort of delay or some sort of reason that has come uh, to block you. Now is a great time to press the reset button and do your 100 day plan and schedule your day one and write down a goal and get really clear about why you want that goal, get really clear on what turning that goal from a goal and, and a vision into your reality would look like and live into that. And if you put in the time for four days or five days, and then you get off track, if you miss a day, don't miss two days. If you miss two days, don't miss three days. If you miss three days, don't miss four days. Just keep coming back to it. Find someone who is going to hold you accountable and tell them what it is that you want to accomplish only if they're the person that's going to cheer you on. And then just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You are not going to achieve your 100-day goal in one day. You're going to achieve it one day by working on it every single day or day by day consistently over time. And it's absolutely worth it for you to figure out what you're made of because you haven't even... I'm just going to say this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to myself for a second and this is probably going to apply to all of you. You haven't even figured out what you're made of yet. You don't even know what you're capable of because you've been giving yourself a chicken exit. You're getting, you've are you been letting yourself off the hook. You've been making an excuse or telling a story. And what you're capable of and what's possible for you far exceeds anything that you have accomplished so far, no matter how old or how young you are, no matter how much you've accomplished or how much you haven't accomplished. 
And so whatever it is that you want to achieve, you can absolutely achieve it. You've just got to put yourself in an environment and make yourself, um, uh, and the, the term isn't coming to me, but it is basically um, indefatigable like, okay. to where you are so confident, you believe in yourself so much that no matter what happens, you don't look at it like it's failure. It's just a first attempt in learning that you are learning what didn't work and you're just going to dust yourself up off and get up and take another step and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain by going for that goal. I love that. And I'm so glad that I asked you to do that. Thank you for being uh, willing to share that with us because that's highly, highly valuable. It, it sounds like you must have done some coaching over the years because I, I feel coached. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Just I love little. it. Yeah. Our guest this week has been Honoré Corder. Honoré is the author of many books, but the book specifically that we've been highlighting on this episode is her book, Vision to Reality. And in that book, she talks all about how to take short-term massive action and enjoy all kinds of success as you do that and steward your time well. Honoré, if people would like to follow you more and learn more about you, where's the best place for them to do that? Oh, you can hang out with me at honorayquarter.com. I like to post fun and inspirational things on Instagram. So I'm at Empire Builder USA. You can connect with me on Facebook and also on LinkedIn. Love it. Well, our guest this week, Honoré Quarter. Thank you so much, Honoré, for being with us. And if you are new to the show, we'd love to have you stop over at platformlaunchers.com. You can take our 21-day platform development planning guide. You can get a copy of it over there. and We'd love to connect with you as well. And don't forget to follow Honoré Quarter in all the different things that she's doing. And be sure to pick up a copy of her book, Vision to reality. Thanks again for listening, and we look forward to catching up with you again right here next week.